everyone, I'm back and today is the big day. We are talking about the Erectus Abdominis, the six pack so to speak. And before I start mumbling around, how about we check out in how this thing looks like and perhaps we even figure out in what our personal version of it is. Let's check it out. Let's dive right in. As you can see, our rectus abdominis and its lines is as unique from person to person as the lines from our fingerprints. The lines in the rectus abdominis are called tendinous intersections and its packs in betweens are sometimes referred to as muscle bellies. So when someone with the same definition and training only has a six pack instead of an eight pack, it is not because they have achieved less, but it is because this person has fewer tendinous intersections and larger muscle bellies, packs, so to speak. So an eight pack is not more of an achievement than a six pack. We are born with our lines and we cannot change them. They are like fingerprints. So please be aware of that when some gym bro sites are promoting to gain more lines from training. One cannot gain more tendons from training. It is just the muscles which become stronger. Tendons will not grow nor form. By the way, the most common variation on a female is the six pack. Four large muscle bellies at the top and two long muscle bellies at the bottom. This is as the lower half has to be able to stretch well for potential pregnancy. Yet there are females who do have more tendinous intersections and there are also people with even fewer intersections or more. Oh wow, so uh, a six pack isn't worse than an eight pack? And how many packs actually do have some celebrities have? But if you think about one of the most famous bodybuilders on earth, Arnold Schwarzenegger, he actually uniquely didn't have that many packs. Very well developed packs, but not that many because he just didn't have as much tendon structure. Don't believe me? Let's check out some different apps and see in how many muscle bellies they actually have. Someone famous with only a few tendinous intersections is Arnold Schwarzenegger. It almost looks as if he has one big pack on the top, two small in the middle and two long lower packs, like a four pack essentially. Another famous erectus abdominis example is Sylvester Stallone's. He has a lot of very even looking intersections and his muscle bellies are almost all identical in size. Even his top two, which for most people are normally smaller. Another interesting celebrity's example would be Ronaldo's. He has six very small muscle bellies in the middle and two very long ones at the bottom. Coming to a female athlete, she has a very evenly structured six pack. Her six muscle bellies seem to have almost all the same size. I have found another very interesting looking female rectus abdominis. This athlete's muscle bellies are all evenly shaped, but they seem to be shaped, shaped like curves, almost like half moons. Another female athlete almost has an identical rectus abdominis to mine. She has uneven lines. One side is with straight intersections and the other side with zigzag lines. The lines are also not aligned with each other. And if you look at my personal rectus abdominis, you will see that mine is also not aligned. One is more straight and one is more zigzaggy. One side has more and the other side has fewer intersections. Great. Now that you understand that the amount of packs has something to do with the tendon tissue you have in between the muscle bellies, you are probably hoping for, does that mean I have just one big belly and no tendon? No. 
I'm sure you have some musty bellies underneath the body fat. So this is exactly the problem. We have to get rid of the body fat to see those fancy muscle bellies and tendon structures. And you're probably wondering in how low and how lean do I need to get until I can finally see my fancy lines and muscle bellies. Let's check it out. Sadly, to actually get visible muscle bellies and tendinous intersections, one has to be very low in body fat. I don't completely agree with this chart here, but at least it gives you a little bit of an idea on how low one actually has to be with their body fat to have visible ab lines. The reason I don't agree with it completely is because it also depends what body type you are. For example, a female pear shape stores most of her fat in her hips and legs and not on her stomach. And that's why she can be relatively higher in body fat and still achieve some nice ab lines, as the stomach is not where she stores most of her fat. That is also the reason why a man has to be much lower in body fat than a female to achieve a six pack because he stores most of his body fat around the abdomen. And that's exactly the reason why he has to get rid of most of his body fat to achieve this look. I must also say that I've had a lot of male clients at 12% not having such definition as it is portrayed here in this chart. The definition started to show more at 10%. Yet the chart is good enough to give you a rough example in how low you actually have to get with your body fat to achieve the six pack look. Right, so I do have to get really lean for that. Yes, you unfortunately do, and this is very much diet related. And unfortunately, it is a completely different topic and I won't be fitting that into this video today. Now that we know how this muscle looks like, how we can get those fancy lines, and um, what they do for our physique and looks, you're probably wondering how can I train this? Now for this, we have to first figure out in what it does and how it moves. And as soon as we figure that out, we can probably come up with quite a lot of exercises to train it. Let's check it out. The main function of the rectus abdominis is flexing your torso. So when you do a crunch, then your rectus abdominis is working very hard. Due to its flexing function of your torso, it is also being used heavily when sneezing, laughing, coughing, vomiting, pooping or giving birth. Awesome. So essentially it moves up, down, up, down. So it bends the torso like this. Yeah, so when I hit ya, sneeze, <coughs> cough, I don't do the vomiting bit, that's a bit too graphic. Giving birth is probably also quite complicated to um, portray on here, but you probably get the idea. Now, how can I train that? It's basically whenever you move your torso into this position, and it doesn't necessarily have to be from the top bit, so it doesn't have to be crunched. It can also be from the bottom bit. Basically, you can raise your leg. So just imagine you can either do it this way around with your top bit of your body, basically your head, or you can do it this way around with your lower bit of your body, basically with your legs. Uh, you can also do it together, yeah? So there are many, many options. You can also do single legs, yeah? There are many options you can do essentially this movement. And for that we can finally do the exercises and check out in what we can actually do. When you perform a core exercise, 
please do not arch your back. Not only will arching your back cause lower back injuries, but it will also not give you any good workout result for your core. Always round your back, and if on floor, press your lower back into the floor. Now that you've seen my wonderful clients performing a lot of floor exercises where you can see this movement, yeah, I'm going to show you a couple of other exercises which you can do on a couple of machines or flying in the air. There we go, let's check it out. Excuse me more. I believe I may have chosen the wrong sound for this piece. Let's do this again. Embarrassing. Now that you've seen my impressive range on hanging on things and lifting my legs up and down, um, there is one little warning um, before you start exercising yourself to death on the rectus abdominis. If you only train yourself on the rectus abdominis, basically on the front, then what happens is you can most likely get a bit tight around there. So I'm having a bit of a picture next to me that you can see this. Um, and your back can curve. To make sure this doesn't happen, we have to stretch our rectus abdominis out, number one. And number two, we have to train its antagonist, which is the erector spina. To the erector spina, we come in another video. Let's first check out the stretches we can do to make sure we don't get overly tight to the front from too many crunches and ebbing, basically. Let's check those stretches out. Thank you. 
Now that we've seen the stretches, we have to talk about the antagonist of the rectus abdominis. Unfortunately, we can't do it all in this video because I think this is the end of the video. Aww. But this will be exactly the topic I will be choosing for next video. It is the erectus spine, the long thing on our spine. It is not quite as exciting because people can't really see it but it is super important for our posture and that's why I think we should really dig deep into this topic. And I shall see you in my next video. Bye.